You have two choices to get to Side Rock Lake after you enter Wallace Lake on your way to the Obucco and Portages. This is the lazy man's way, paddling for a few hours up this lazy stream, winding around and winding around. I've been heading for that hill in the distance for quite a while. The other option is to head for the east end of Wallace Lake and take a snowmobile portage trail across to Side Rock Lake. It takes about the same amount of time if you're double portaging. But you've got so much portaging coming up on the Abucca one that I suggest you take the Lazy River first. This is the entrance to Side Rock Lake. We can probably use this rock as a gauge for future years. Here's the start of the Obuckowin Portage from Side Rock Lake. It took me about two hours and 20 minutes to paddle from the Wallace Lake dock into here under really ideal conditions. A few flies around, no mosquitoes yet, but now we're ready to find out what's really in there this year. I carried the first load in for 15 minutes. Trails a little bit, a little bit of black dirt in a few places, but really no mush. You can see where it could get wet. But so far, the trail has been perfectly open. Not quite this good, but really good all the way for the first 15 minutes. Well, a total of 20 minutes up the trail, and now the fun's going to begin. Getting wet. I don't know how bad it'll be. Well, the last time I was here, the portage. Still had about 300 meters to go at this point. I'm thankful for what the beavers have done. They got this water level raised up really well. I might be able to paddle up right up to the next portage on some higher ground too. Maybe one more bog walk could be gone. I have had to pull over some floating bog and had to take it over one beaver dam, with even with all this water up. But if you find the channel in the middle, you can pull it through without too much trouble put you on the second lake. Start of the second portage of the Obucco in three. Looks a little too thick to paddle, but I might be able to pull my canoe through there. Short recap of yesterday's travels. I paddled two and a half hours from Wallace Lake to the start of the first portage to Obucco in. I spent three and a half hours portaging across to here. This is the start of the second portage. You know I've made it here because this is what you'll find along the portage trail, Stone Man. I came upon all that flooded beaver pond at the end of the first portage. It's shaved off 300 meters and it was probably an advantage. I did have to lift over the original beaver dam at that 300 meter point. And then there was some floating bog to contend with which is going to make a mess for as the water levels drop it's always going to be questionable just how you're going to approach that. But overall the portages was very clear. There were several wet spots but nothing really like a deep quagmire for a long period of time. I think some corduroy could fix it up pretty quickly really. So I was satisfied. My goal was to make it here on the first night and I did. I'm looking forward to the next one. About the first 300 meters of portage number two, after you get across that floating bog and get up to Stone Man, you're traveling over barren, sparsely populated with jack pine tree, solid rock, very nice passage. Fortunately, things are about to change. We drop down into the black spruce bog and pretty soft going through there. I'm not sure how long that'll be. There's still about 200 meters to go to finish this second portage. At this point the main trail drops off straight ahead into that quagmire. There can be a lot of quagmire between here and that last 200 meters, but I think the paddlers and the canoeists, they go down this rock and they avoid a little bit of it, but we still meet up with that trail. Just a little side cut that helps us out of some of the mud. Well, there's the 
what the end of the second portage looks like as you're heading north. It's not too bad right here, thanks to the probably the outward bound people and all the Boy Scouts that used to come up this Obuckawin portages. There's been a lot of wood hauled out and laid down in the soupy spots. And a little hint, I found that in those places I'd feel from it with my paddle and it was best to stay right in the middle of the trail and there was plenty of wood down there. This is the start of the third portage. This has been altered a little bit from some old maps you might have that show a boggy trail to the north, but you want to come to this big cairn down here and head up this way. This lone sandal was left here on the cairn for the third portage. Probably someone that lost the other one in a foot and a half of that bog back there. Not exactly what I'd recommend for trying to portage you a buckle in portages. This is my favorite right here. I've been using those for a number of years and when, when the going gets tough they stay on. I finished those Obucco and Portages yesterday afternoon about this time but I was so wasted by the time I got done with that last one I didn't have any energy to film. But that third portage that started off with that nice rock landing there, I did a bunch of trimming to get the trail straightened out. Stayed in that high rock and then it dipped down into that one wet spot and around that corner I did hit some. One stretch it was about knee deep in the mud. But after that, that was only a short stretch. And after that, it was a good walk on out to Obuckowin Lake. Overall, the portage went pretty well. I would say that they were a little wet, but they could be a lot wetter. I think as that new blood vein bridge is put in and that road up to there, that these Obuckowin portages are going to become very important to people trying to make a nice loop up in this part of Manitoba. Somebody gets the shuttle system set up, it'll work out really well. I camped on a buckowin about halfway up the lake. Got a nice sight. I was really tired, as I said. Got up this morning and I portaged up through to Carroll and then up to Craven, and that's where I sit now. And I was going to push on, do some bushwhacking over toward the walking stick, but I changed my mind and came across this beautiful campsite and I stopped. And one nice thing is, they must have had plenty of rain here, because these blueberries are lush, and there's a lot of them at this site. I'm going to spend the afternoon resting up from the Buckowin ordeal.